Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Poor Man's Chemist. In this video, we are going to be making sodium dithionite, which is an air-sensitive reducing agent. Um, hopefully it's going to work out, because um, obviously I don't have a way to do this under inert gas. But um, sodium dithionite is a really interesting compound. It contains a sulfur-sulfur single bond. So it's kind of like sulfur's version of a peroxide. With peroxides, the oxygen-oxygen single bond is very weak. Um, in sodium dithionite, the sulfur-sulfur single bond is also very weak. Um, in fact, even weaker than the one in hydrogen peroxide. So, um, yeah, it has to be stored under vacuum or else it will slowly decompose. What I've got here, what we're starting with, this is a solution of 25 grams of sodium bisulfite that I've dissolved in 25 milliliters of water. Um, the total volume ended up being a little higher than that. Um, but anyway, what I'm going to do is I had to put this on the heat and let it stir for a while in order to get it all dissolved. The protocol, um, which is taken from a website called Thomas's Chemistry, says to let it cool down to 20 degrees Celsius before we proceed with the next step, which will be the addition of zinc. Um, so, all I'm going to do now is just wait for this to cool down, and I will come back when we are ready to add the zinc powder. All right, everyone, our solution has cooled down. It's actually a little bit under 20 C, but let's hope this works. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to add nine and a half grams of powdered zinc to this. We're going to let that stir for a little bit. It says to stir vigorously. Then um, it says to add five milliliters of water and then filter it. So that is what we are going to do. All right, here comes the zinc. Oh, shit. Okay, we're supposed to stir it vigorously. Not really sure for how long, though. Five mils of water. Okay. All right. We are going to let this go for a little bit, just a few minutes, and then after that, we will move on to the next step. All right, as you can see, I had to cool things down a little bit because the reaction was exothermic. Um, the source did say to keep it under 20 degrees, or right at 20 degrees C, which is about what it should be, I think. But I'm honestly not sure how long this needs to go for. But given that the compound is air sensitive, I don't really want this stirring here for too very long. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to see if that pretty much cut it. Okay, and the protocol says to wash this with two 5 milliliter portions of water. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Hmm. The zinc has to change color a little bit, so that's encouraging. Alright, that looks like it's got it. in the ice water here. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Yeah, let's not, not do that. Stay. <laughs> All right. Yes. So there you can see we filtered off the solid. Again, not sure if that was premature or not, but only one way to find out, which is to go through the motions and find out if this works. If not, we'll figure out what we did wrong and we will come back to it. All right, according to the text um, on the web page that this is all coming from, um, you can either use this impure solution as is, or we can precipitate out the sodium dithionite. And the way that we're going to do that, move that here, deal with that later, here's our solution. We are going to add 37 and a half milliliters of absolute alcohol. Oh, very nice. Okay. Now the instructions say to put this in a freezer for a little while to allow all of the dithionite to crystallize. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I will come back when there is something to see. <laughs> All right, so I've had this uh, mixture cooling on ice now for, I guess, a little more than an hour. It did not take long for everything to precipitate out. So, this is what we've got. It's a whole lot of a white solid. Um, I am going to go ahead and filter this off and wash it with a little um, anhydrous ethanol. But this is just a practice run, so I mean, I, I'm not really going to do anything with this. I tried looking everywhere for some kind of spot test for dithionite that would, you know, work for dithionite, but not for bisulfite or vice versa. Um, unfortunately, most of the stuff that I found that you could do um, it, with dithionite bisulfite could also achieve or sulfite so i mean i don't really have a way to prove that's what this is i seem to keep hitting these impasses but um of course the proof will be when i go to try to do the uranium for oxalate and whether or not it works so you can believe that i'll be doing a lot of research on this reaction before I carry that out just to make sure it actually works and if any of you have an idea for a reaction that would distinguish dithionite from bisulfite or sulfite I would love to hear it I really would <laughs> because it would be really nice to test this stuff before you know I'm not this stuff I'm gonna make up a fresh batch before I try to do the uranium 4 oxalate but before I use my last three grams of uranyl diacetate I'd really like to know if it's going to work or not. Um, and plus, that would be a pretty epic video, because even though I can only make a small amount of it, it's supposed to be a nice green color, which that just sounds cool. So, anyway, um, that's really it. 